Hey guys, it's Megan here. Today's video is going to be one that I'm going to try out on my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the things that I've been watching the past two months, June and July. There's a lot of movies and books and TV shows that I don't really get to talk about. I want to talk about them. So this is kind of my way to do that, is to do a full video of the, all the things that I consume. Let's get into the things that I watched the last so two months. The first thing that I watched in June was Twilight Eclipse. In honor of Midnight Sun coming out and feeling my Twilight years and nostalgia come hit me, I wanted to have a Twilight Marathon back in May that I watched Twilight and New Moon. I really like Eclipse. The music from Eclipse is really good. I love the cinematography, I love the way everything looks. I just love the scene where Edward proposes to Bella. That is one of my favorite scenes in Eclipse. But I had to give Eclipse this time around an 8.5 out of 10. The second, third, and fourth film that I watched uh, in June was kind of an impulse. I was just kind of getting overwhelmed by everything I had on my list. So I decided to watch something that was not on my list. <laughs> I ended up watching... <laughs> This is so lame. I ended up watching the Christmas Prince trilogy, which starts off with a Christmas Prince, and then is a Christmas Prince of the Royal Wedding, and then with Christmas Prince, the Royal Baby. I, I don't know, I watched the first one, and I don't even remember any of the characters' names. So that's, that tells you how much I totally paid attention. I was just in the mood for a Christmas film. I hadn't seen these. I like Netflix's cheesy Christmas films. They're short and sweet. So I gave a Christmas Prince a 7 out of 10, because I, I kind of enjoyed it. It was fun. I also gave Christmas Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding, a 7 out of 10, because I also really enjoyed that. I think my least favorite was definitely A Christmas Prince, The Royal Baby. I just was not feeling it. Then the first book that I read this month was this book, and it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it was kind of with a twist, and I liked that. I kind of like the Beauty and the Beast retellings that have like a more whimsical, magical, darker, more darker enchanted feel to them. This was kind of one of them. So the first book that I read or in June was A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I really really liked this. I remember within like the first nine pages I was like, I am sold. I am here for these characters. Harper, Ren, I, I love them all. I highly recommend this book if you like Beauty and the Beast retellings. Highly recommend this book and the series if you enjoy fairy tale retellings and a good fantasy novel. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling but with a twist and it is a good twist. It is a twist that keeps you engaged and keeps it interesting and keeps it unique and fresh. I think I gave it a 9 or an 8 out of 10. Next movie that I watched in June was Knives Out! I finally saw Knives Out but I just never got around to seeing it in theaters like I wanted to and I really liked it. It was really good. I didn't see the, the twist coming. I didn't see the ending coming. Chris Evans did a fabulous job in it. He was so good. This girl or like the caretaker for the grandfather. She was really good in the film. Jamie Lee Curtis was really good. The girl from 13 Reasons Why, I thought she did a pretty good job too. Give it a nine out of 10. I remember I was sitting on the edge of my couch, not being able to sit still, being like, what's gonna happen? Oh my God, how are they gonna figure it out? Like who, who did it? The next film that I saw in June, this was a rewatch. Uh, my sister has never see, had never seen it, and so she wanted to watch it, it was Frozen 2. Again, I love Frozen 2. I just can't help it. The first time I saw I gave it a 9 out of 10 and I still give it 9 out of 10 because it still has that same whimsical feel that it has. Kristoff's song, I love it so much. Continue on with my Twilight rewatch, Breaking Dawn Part 1, which is my favorite of the Twilight films because that wedding, we had been waiting so long for it. It just felt so fulfilling. When they played Flightless Bird, when that's the song they danced to at prom in the first Twilight movie, I was like, are you kidding me? This is amazing. I love the callback. I also love Bella's transformation. Can we just talk about that? It's probably one of my favorite Twilight scenes of all time is watching Bella transform. She's lying there on the table still, but inside her head she's freaking out because she's like in so much pain. She's feel like she's on fire. Pan down her arm, you see the bite marks from Edward start to like close and heal themselves, fade to her hair, and her hair is like a ashy brown, and now it's fading golden, like chestnut-y warm toned brown. You hear Bella's lullaby playing and all these flashbacks of her life. Oh my god, it is a perfect scene. So well done. I love that scene so much. Next book that I read in June was A Heart So Fierce and Broken. This is the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I didn't enjoy this as much as A Curse So Dark and Lonely 
but I actually did enjoy that I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. The ending, the last I think 200 pages were like, mm, 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 I love this, it's so good. Next movie that I watched in June was another rewatch. There's a lot of Marvel films that my mom hasn't seen. She went to go see uh, Infinity War and Endgame before seeing a lot of these Marvel films that she should have. And one of them was Doctor Strange. By the way, can we just talk about how cool this poster is, like bro. And she really enjoyed Doctor Strange. She I thought the CGI and like the magical stuff was really cool. I really love Doctor Strange. It was one of the Marvel films where I really didn't know much about Doctor Strange before seeing the film and I really had a fun time with it. I remember halfway through the film she was like, oh I understand. She's like, now I feel informed because I know why, I know who he was from Infinity War. I know why this happened. I know about Wong now and where he came from. So I gave Doctor Strange an 8 out of 10 because I really enjoyed that film. The first TV show that I watched in June, this was a TV show that I was super excited about and that was love. Victor! I loved, loved Victor. Oh my god! I gave it a 9 out of 10 because I enjoyed it so much. It, there were a couple pacing issues here and there, but I overlooked it because I was having a fun time with the characters. Benji, I loved him. Felix, I believe Felix was his neighbor. I'm so upset that they left us at that cliffhanger like they did. Season one definitely felt like Victor's journey of discovering who he is and figuring out who he is sex sexuality wise and coming to terms with what he is. And then I think season two will probably be a kind of figuring out his family dynamic with all of that, trying to figure out where he stands with his family and trying to teach his family more about the LGBTQ community. Next movie that I watched was Breaking Dawn Part 2! The last scene where they're in the meadow and Bella finally shows Edward what she's been thinking all of these years because she finally opens her mind to him is just so beautiful. I cry every time. So I get Breaking Dawn Part 2 an 8 out of 10. That fight scene, we're not even gonna talk about that. The next movie that I watched in June, I watched the first two in June and then I watched the third one in July, but that was the Lord of the Rings trilogy! We decided to have a Lord of the Rings marathon because all the extended editions are on Amazon Prime. I think the first one I gave an 8 out of 10 just because I really enjoyed. The second one is definitely my least favorite of Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. I just... I don't really like the two towers very much. I give it like a 7 out of 10. And then Return of the King, I give it kind of an 8 out of 10. A little bit of a lower. I give it like maybe a 7.8 out of 10. And the last book that I read in June was Heartless by Marissa Meyer. But I ended up really, really enjoying Heartless. This tells the story of Kath who will be the future Queen of Hearts one day, the Queen of Hearts, you know, off with her head. It tells this her story of how she was this wonderful girl and then stuff happened and then she became this heartless Queen of Hearts. I gave it a 8 out of 10. So that was everything that I watched and read in June. Let's move on to all the things that I watched in July. The first movie that I watched in July was Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a Spider-Man can. Far From Home edition. It was the one year anniversary since Spider-Man Far From Home came out in theaters. So I was like, let's do this thing. And I still love Spider-Man Far From Home. I I honestly think I like it a little bit better than Spider-Man Homecoming. Like, I love the growth that Peter goes through in this film. All of the MJ and Peter stuff was so cute! I gave Spider-Man Far From Home an 8 out of 10. So the next film that I watched in July to continue on with the Lord of the Rings whole saga, I watched Hobbit! Unexpected Journey! This is definitely my favorite of the Hobbits just because I love Bilbo and I love his whole dynamic with the dwarves. Thorin! I just, I, my favorites are Bilbo, Thorin, Philly, and Killy. And three of those characters out of my favorite four get killed. So it's a sad time up in here. How Bilbo and Thorin's relationship kind of grows and develops in this film. I love that we get some really good Philly and Killy moments. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. The next film that I saw was, and that was Like a Boss. I really had a fun time with it. It wasn't one of my favorite films. Like a Boss, I gave a 7 out of 10. This film was one that I wanted to see in theaters so badly and I never did. And that was Charlie's Angels with Kristen Stewart and Naomi Scott. I've 
I've never seen any of the original Charlie's Angels with like Lucy Liu, Cameron Diaz, and Drew Barrymore. I know there's another one before that, but I've never seen any of those. And Charlie's Angels kept me entertained and I really actually really liked it a lot. I think I gave it an 8 out of 10 because I really enjoyed it. Kristen Stewart did a great job. I really liked her acting. Next two films that I watched back to back is Hobbit Desolation of Smog. Smag? Smog? Smog? I don't know how to- I, I say it wrong every time. And Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies. As much as I love, I love the first Hobbit film. That is like my favorite of the three. But I also really like Desolation of Smog because Smog, Smaug, whatever. I love Benedict Cumberbatch at voicing the dragon. He also did the motion capture for him, which was like Bob. Him as the dragon was a highlight of the film. Take away the other characters and just give me like a whole two and a half hour, almost three hour film of just smog, doing whatever. I give the second Hobbit, I think I give it a eight, eight out of ten because I really liked it. Then Battle of the Five Armies, oof. That movie is just like killing and violence overload. It's too much. I didn't know this, but the extended edition of Battle of the Five Armies is rated R. And I understand why. There is some decapitation scenes. There's a lot of guts and gore. Mm -mm. Not a fan of that. No. I'm gonna give that a 7 out of 10. Can't get anything lower just because I really love Thorin's journey. First book that I finished in July was Renegades by Marissa Meyer. It gave me like low-key Avengers vibes because it has to do with superheroes. I really, really enjoyed it. I recommend this book. Let me read you the synopsis because it's kind of hard to explain it without giving spoilers away. The Renegades are a syndicate of prodigies, humans with extraordinary abilities who emerge from the ruins of a crumbled society and establish peace and order where chaos resigned. As champions of justice, they remain a symbol of hope and courage to everyone except the villains they overthrew. Nova has a reason to hate the renegades and she is on a mission for vengeance. As she gets closer to her target she meets a renegade boy who believes in justice and in Nova but Nova's alliance is to a villain who has the power to end them both. If you like superheroes and really just good cool sci-fi kind of books I'd recommend it. And the last movie that I watched in July was Kissing Booth 2. It was good. I really liked it. I like Netflix's cheesy kind of like romance rom-com movie. I think I like Kissing Booth 2 a little bit more. I'd probably give Kissing Booth 2 a... I'd say an 8 out of 10 because I enjoyed it and I'd probably watch it again. I also like cried during it a little bit in a few parts and like if I cry in a movie uh, it's usually good. I've been listening to Taylor Swift's new album, Folklore, on repeat on midnight when it dropped. I listened to all that music and it's very good. I think it's my third favorite album just because I like the feel. It feels very vulnerable and very like open. Mad Woman, Seven, and August. Oh my god, those are my favorite tracks. And Cardigan's really growing on me. Just the whole album in general is great. The first TV show that I watched, I don't watch a lot of TV shows. I tend to watch more movies here and there. The first TV show that I watched in July was one that I continued from May. I started season one in May and it took me so long to start season two. I don't know why and the season two was great and that was season two of Haiku. I just started Haiku in May. Oh my god. It is my everything. I love it so much. And then like Hinata, Kageyama, Daichi, Asuhi, Sugawara, Tadashi, Tanaka, Nishinoya. The beginning of season two is good. The middle is really good and then towards the end when they're doing like all of the playing against the other teams is so so good. I'd love to do a review of Haiku. There's so many good storylines and plots and arcs in season two and it really steps it up from season one. Definitely have to give season two a nine out of ten just because I really enjoyed it a lot. The second book I read in July why was they both die at the end. What a great title. By the way Adam Silvera is a great author. He writes a lot of LGBTQ books. I love his books. They're really good. I really enjoyed this book. I give it a nine out of ten because I cried a lot. I recorded my reaction crying to the end of the book because it is, they both die at the end. So they, you know, it's not about them dying at the end. It's about their journey, the adventure they went on, how much they could do in one day. Of uh, Everyone dies, but it's more about their journey and the friendship and the memories that they make. What if tomorrow was your last day? How would you spend it? How would you live it? What would you do? It's like that. Basically, it's set in this world where on the day you are going to die, you don't know you're going to die, you get a call from Deathcasters. They say, we are sorry to lose you 
and you are going to die today. They don't know what time you're going to die. They don't know how you're going to die. They don't know where you're going to die. They just know in the span of 24 hours, you are going to die somehow. Um, it's emotional. Um, I would read it. I really liked it. It's a very short book. I highly recommend this book and all of Adam Slavera's books. They're really well done. And the last TV show that I watched, I watched it on one day because it was only six episodes and that was Transformer Siege, the first chapter in the War for Cybertron trilogy from Netflix. I never thought I'd see the day where Netflix would make a Transformer show and it would be really good and it'd be dark and gritty. I really enjoyed this show. It's not my favorite Transformers show. It's not my least favorite either. It definitely ranks higher up. It ranks in like the Prime and the Rescue Bot bubble for me. I think the voice acting was probably my only complaint. It's just some of the voice acting was very like hit or miss for me. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about the spoilers and everything for this show just because I have a whole video on that. If you want to check it out, link it in the description. But I really enjoyed it. So I thought it was really well done. I have some issues with it, but it's like anything, nothing's ever perfect. I think I give it a 7.8 out of 10. So that was everything that I watched, read, and listened to in the month of July. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye, guys!